Hi. Today we're going to talk about what is the Microsoft Power Platform. This is something that I've been asked quite a bit as a Dynamics 365 consultant. People are wondering, is the Power Platform just Dynamics 365 or is it Power Apps? Is it Flow? Is it just Power BI? I've been asked this by other people, even within Microsoft. There's uh, quite a few people that don't quite understand it. So hopefully today we can go through this presentation. I can give you a bit of a backstory of how the Power Platform came to be. And then hopefully by telling that story, you'll understand all the pieces and how they work together. Who am I? My name is Nick Dolman. I'm a Microsoft Business Applications MVP. I've been working with Dynamics CRM since version one and I've been working with the Power Platform ever since it came out over a year ago and working with Power Apps and Flow and some of the other uh, features of the platform. So let's start way back at the beginning. Dynamics CRM. It was a platform that was released in, you know, early 2000, 2003, I believe it was released. It was a CRM system. It had a sales and service module. And eventually they introduced a marketing module around version three. And it was great. It was an application that you could help manage your sales, your service, your marketing. And it all worked on a common business application layer, meaning these modules didn't work independently of each other. If an account had an opportunity against it, well, the same account could have a case open against it or it could be added to a marketing list for the marketing purposes. So if you're working within the CRM application, you're very used to that user interface. It was a very common interface. It had views, it has forms, and it is a way that you can kind of manage your entire customer engagement process. Now, all of this was sitting on the Microsoft stack. It was sitting the back end was Microsoft SQL. So it was a you know common database there. And it was really a pretty interesting system and got a lot of traction and exploded in growth over the years. Um, eventually, around the late 2000s, uh, Microsoft brought it to the online world. So you instead, you didn't have to install it on servers. You could just actually go to Microsoft site, swipe your credit card, and then away you go. You have dynamic CRM online. Now, this wasn't a completely separate product. It was the same product as the on-premises version. Microsoft gave you that power of choice so you could run your CRM system both on-premises or online, depending on what your needs were. And for the most part, they had the exact same features, the same layout. You could even transfer customizations from one to the other. Now, all of this was sitting on Azure and Office 365. So again, it's beginning to use that entire Microsoft stack. Now, the really cool thing about this, it was very extensible. You could create your own custom entities, you could create your own forms, your own views. And so therefore, there's a lot of scenarios that you go beyond your traditional sales and service. Now, these features are put there to extend the sales and service. So if you didn't like how the opportunity form was laid out, you could add fields, you could rearrange it. Same with your account if you needed to track specific information. It was very extensible and you didn't necessarily need developers. The tools to do this are very easy. You can add fields, you can add forms, you could add views, you can rearrange things. And it really became a, uh, a platform to develop all sorts of interesting applications. But with this, you could go beyond just sales and service and marketing applications. So when I was working, I had a lot of customers that were doing things like membership management or nonprofits. I even worked for a company that did reinsurance applications and they had a whole process involved that didn't really follow your typical opportunity process or your cases and services. So I was able to create custom entities and custom forms and whole other modules using this because the extensibility tools allowed me to do that. Now, we could still use um, some developers for creating plugins and extending that for certain features. And Microsoft even had a fairly you know, involved software development kit around that so we could extend this entire application. And therefore, we could build unique line of business apps. And this became known as XRM. What could you do with it? Well, you have your data entity, your relationship, so you could begin to model your data. You didn't necessarily have to be a database architect or analyst to understand this and create those entities and create those relationships between the entities. It was multi-user. So a lot of times if you were doing something like in a spreadsheet or an access database, you could only have so many people logged in at the same time or there's always a danger of someone overwriting information because this was a multi-user, multiple people could be in the system and you know, working on particular business applications. It was also web-based. Now, web-based meaning that it wasn't necessarily accessible by everybody on the World Wide Web, but it was accessible through a browser. So even if you had an on-premises system, you would access this using your browser. And that way you didn't have to install specialized software in all the workstations. I remember going around 
um, with uh, even floppy disks and installing clients um, on former other CRM systems and it being a real pain or even pushing those, those out with uh, some other tools. This way you just have to give the URL to your users and they should be able to log in and away they go. It also had user security so we could lock users out of certain areas or give them access to certain things or if there was data that was sensitive we could block that. The user interface was common. So if you were already pretty comfortable navigating dynamic CRM and we built a customized XRM application, you'd be pretty comfortable navigating that as well as long as you understood the data model. There was automation, there was workflows, we could automate things, there was plugins, we could extend that, reporting using SQL Server reporting services, and even integration where we could tie that into other systems like ERP systems like Great Plains or Navision or AX. <coughs> Excuse me. There's also the mobile client. So with this, with a mobile client using either iPhone or Windows phone, even for a time well back, BlackBerry, not anymore, you could access the system using mobile. So it really had a little bit of everything where you could build these unique line of business applications without having to go to those deep developer tools. And of course, with all the enhancements and upgrade path and things like that, it was much easier to maintain. You didn't have that huge level of technical debt or you didn't have this monolithic system that once it's built, it's set and then gets ripped out and replaced in a few years. It constantly can evolve with your organization and your organization's needs. Now this concept, Microsoft latched onto it and they actually even did a little bit of a campaign around 2010, 2011, and it was called XRM and they kind of tagged it as one platform, many applications, infinite possibilities. If you look, you can still find the YouTube video. It's actually pretty cool. It starts out with client relationship management, evolves to clown relationship management and cow relationship management, and then you know uh, uh, awards and grants, relationship management, insurance relationship management. It kind of goes into a plethora of different applications and gives you those infinite possibilities. So really, it was a pretty cool little application to be, to be built on, and it was all built on top of the dynamic CRM system. Now, Microsoft, they went on a bit of a spending spree and they bought a whole bunch of other ERP applications. And when they did that, they, uh, there was, of course, they, they actually began to use the Dynamics name for those. So you probably heard of Dynamics GP, Dynamics AX, Dynamics Nav. And it was getting a little bit confusing of all these different business applications. So they came up with this concept of Dynamics 365. And Satya Nadella, a few years ago at a Worldwide Partner Conference, announced the Dynamics 365. So, you know, was this a new product? Well, not really. It was actually a whole bunch of other products being put together under a particular business suite. So this is where Microsoft marketing sometimes comes in and save the day. So they're like, okay, we have all these different business applications. People are getting confused. Should they use Navision? Should they use Great Plains? Uh, where does CRM fit in all this? They said, no problem. Marketing said, we have the perfect solution. We're going to create a set of stickers. That's right. They created a set of stickers. And they said Microsoft Dynamics 365 on them. And you know, people like my daughter, she loves stickers. She loves sticking things on there. So they actually rebranded all of these different applications as Microsoft 365. Or sorry, Microsoft Dynamics 365. So we had things like Dynamics CRM. We had... Um, Microsoft Dynamics AX, Microsoft Dynamics Nav, and just by sticking the sticker on it, they we went through the whole process of taking this and they would disappear and they would all now become Microsoft Dynamics 365. Now this caused a little bit of confusion. Um, I've actually done presentations where I'm presenting a Microsoft Dynamics 365 and there's people thinking, well, is this the, the AX side? And I'm like, no, sorry, this is, I'm talking about CRM. I'm like, oh, okay. So there's a bit of confusion there. So now we've actually renamed things a little bit. We have Dynamics 365, which is now called Dynamics 365 for customer engagement. And again, we can still do that XRM line of business applications. Kind of tacked on the side, we have Dynamics 365, Finance and Operations, and then Dynamics 365 Business Central. Now these are just renamed different applications but they're all kind of put now under that platform the Dynamics 365 platform. Now meanwhile at Microsoft at some other lab they were working on some other really cool stuff but it was on the other side of the campus. Now I'm not exactly sure this is exactly how it happened but this is how I'm telling the story. This is my presentation. There was Project Sienna. 
And what Project Sienna was, was the ability to for what we would call citizen developers or makers to build customized unique business apps. And now this eventually became what we call the classic power apps, where you could create, you know, basically draw controls on the screen the very same way you would use PowerPoint, or even if you remember the old access system where you could actually create these applications. And it was really cool. It was all web-based. Um, it was low code, no code. And then the back end, it could tie to SharePoint. It could tie to Office 365. You could tie that to SQL. And of course, this was meant to be a cloud-based application as well. And that all sat on top of Azure. There's also Microsoft Flow. And that was in another lab. And that was a way to do low-code, no-code workflows. So how to do that orchestration, how to get these different applications talking to each other, how to automate a lot of mundane and administrative tasks. And again, this could tie into SharePoint, Office 365, SQL, etc. It also could tie into Dynamic CRM and some of the other platforms, but we'll get to that in a minute. In terms of reporting, there was Power BI, which was actually a, um, a tool that originally came out of the SQL Server Group. And what it was a way that you could tie to different data sources and create some very powerful dashboards and vision, visuals, analytics around your data. They then eventually, in these labs, are thinking, you know, maybe we need a database with some common entities. So not so much SQL, like, yeah, SQL is a great data source. But the, you know, for the end users, they don't want to actually go into the SQL Server Enterprise Manager and start creating tables and things like that. How can we help them? How can we make like a citizen developer friendly database? So they came up with this idea of the common data service because they thought, you know what? When we're building applications, there's a lot of entities that people will use every single time. So something like, you know, accounts or contacts or activities, all business applications, well, most business applications need these things. Maybe you see where I'm going with this and we'll get to that in a minute as well. So we had this idea of the common data service, which really was the schema. This was sort of the template, the pattern. And then from that, you would have that common data model. You create that common data service. And that was your low code, no code database that you could tie your power apps into. Now, they still could talk to SharePoint and some of these other data sources. But because we had this common data service, we can actually do quite a bit more with it. So these guys were thinking, you know, this is really cool technology. What can we do with this new tech? Hmm, Hey, there's a good idea. We could build unique line of business applications. Why? Because with a common data model, we have that data entity and relationship. It's multi-user. We could have different power apps talking to the common data service. It's web-based because, you know, it's all on Azure and we can access our power apps to the web. There's user security. There's authentication built into CDS. There's that user interface, which everyone likes. There's the automation with Flow, reporting with Power BI. Uh, there's integrations, other systems. So we can actually have these systems talking to each other. Um, of course, the Power Apps could run on mobile and tablets. This is really cool stuff. And so they kind of came up with this unique line of business application platform. Now they presented this, and I'm not exactly sure how this went on the room, but here's how I think it happened. I think these guys are presenting these tools about all the cool stuff they could do. And then the Dynamics 365 or the Dynamic CRM guys were kind of going, hello, we've had this. We've had this for 10 years. Everything you're describing, we already have in Dynamics CRM. We can build those uh, custom entities. We can build those unique line of business apps. We have that common database where we've, we've, you know, the database users don't need to go to SQL to create tables. We can do that through our interface. So I'm also pretty sure that management saw that and they're like, oh man, we just spent millions of dollars creating this whole power apps system. And we had dynamic sitting here all the time. So meanwhile, I'm sure there was a marketing person in the room said, we got this, no worries. How about we just call everything power apps? And they're like, what? Yeah, yeah. We're just gonna create some more stickers and we're call them power app stickers. Remember how we fixed Dynamics 365? and got AX and NAV and all them under the same brand, we'll do the same thing here. So they created a whole set of these Power App stickers and they began to go through all the applications and they began to stick them together. So if you actually look at the Solution Explorer in Dynamic CRM, you'll see this was the one from a couple versions back. Well, all marketing did was just peel off the Power App sticker and bam, same interface, but now it's called Power Apps. 
problem solved. So really, that's how they've taken all these technologies and the Dynamics 365 system, Power BI, Microsoft Flow and Power Apps, they put all those together and that effectively became the Power Platform. So that's sort of the story of how the whole Power Platform came together and how these different components and things like that merged together and now provides a very robust system. So with that Power Platform, we can actually build a lot of unique line of business applications. Now, I know the question is, well, what about Dynamics 365? Because I know we're using the underlying technology, it's called Power Apps, uh, called Model Driven Apps, and we have Power Apps. How does this all come together? Well, Dynamics 365 should no longer be considered a platform, but it really is applications. Dynamics 365 is an application, not a platform. I know you might have heard on Twitter, some of the other, uh, there's been other MVPs that sort of say, well, Dynamics 365 is dead. It was really just meant for effect. It's not dead. It's just dead as a platform. Really, you should be using the Power Platform to build your model-driven apps. And if you need those sales, service, talent, all those other applications, you can bolt those to the side of your application. So we have the Power Platform. We have the Dynamics 365 first-party apps, like the sales, service, marketing. Uh, there's the new marketing. There's talent, retail. There's a whole bunch more coming. We have that ability to create our unique line of business apps. So we don't necessarily need those Dynamics 365 licenses. Maybe we will to enhance them, but because that's all sitting on that common data service, that version two, which was really just the CRM database from way back when, that's sitting on the common data model, which of course is sitting on Azure SQL. We can enhance this with Flow and Power BI. There's over 200 connectors, so we can talk to all sorts of different applications. Now that Dynamics 365 finance and operations story and the Dynamics 365 Business Central, they're still part of the integral process, still working away at that too, so they could all be on the common data service as well. And that common data model, so really to make all these applications and those apps talk to each other. So I realize this is a pretty quick uh, introduction, but hopefully this gives you the background of how the Power Platform came to be, how those pieces kind of merged together and going forward, all the really cool stuff you can build using the Power Platform. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys have putting together using the Power Platform, using Canvas-based apps, model-driven apps, Flow, and all these pieces. So thank you very much. Have a great day.